We hope you've already watched our previous two videos on trailing time period returns, otherwise this video on rolling returns might not make as much sense to you. Rolling period returns allow you to examine multiple trailing period returns all at once. We'll show you a chart depicting rolling period returns by discussing how these returns are calculated. And again, we'll look at the performance of Vanguard's S&P 500 fund up through May 31st, 2011. This fund had its first full month of performance starting September 1st, 1976. We calculated the return you would have earned over the next 12 months if you had been invested in the fund on September 1st. Then we calculated the full year return if the investment had instead been made on October 1st, 1976. Then we calculated the annual return starting on November 1st, 1976. We keep making these 12-month calculations at the start of every month through June 30th, 2010. In other words, we calculated 406 one-year trailing period returns. We stack rank them from high to low, discovering our highest one-year return was a 58.93% gain, and the lowest was a 43.32% loss. There were 318 one-year trailing returns of 0% or greater, and 88 one-year trailing returns that were negative. Had an investor bought the Vanguard S&P 500 fund on the first day of any month since its inception, about 22% of the time, money would have been lost. We then repeated that same type of calculation, but for a two-year investment period, again starting on September 1st, 1976, and figuring out the trailing period returns for 394 two-year periods. As before, we stack rank them from highest to lowest. We continue on with this methodology for additional holding periods until we have this graph and table. Trailing period returns only tell you how an investment or index performed for very specific periods of time. Rolling period returns tell you how the fund performed over multiple trailing time periods. Why are rolling period returns so important? With them, you have a much better sense of the extent of volatility an investment involves. Yes, the trailing one, three, or five year period returns of the investment may have been positive, but there may have been times when over those same time periods, investment performance has been significantly negative. Can you tolerate that degree of investment risk? If not, you may be better off with a more conservative investment.